Hello and welcome back to Math and Tea, the show where we talk math and drink tea. I'm your host, Professor Joseph Van Dehei, and in today's episode, we're talking politics. Not national politics, because I'm as sick of that as everyone else, and I cannot believe how much longer it is until November. But instead, we're talking math politics. Let's get to it. So the topic for today, and possibly for the next couple of episodes, is Professor Andrew Hacker. He's a political scientist who recently gave a talk at The Ohio State University, and he uh, prompted a lot of thoughts on it. Well, I suppose there's no better place to begin than giving you some background on Professor Hacker himself. Now, to start with, Professor Hacker taught at Queens College. He's a political scientist, but he offered to teach an introductory math course for his university. He was interested in seeing, well, what it was like and what it required. He's interested in math education as a matter of political policy. Why do we teach it? Why do we require certain things to be taught and the like? Now, several years ago, Professor Hacker wrote a widely circulated op-ed for the New York Times titled, Is Algebra Necessary? And it should be emphasized, he emphasizes this as well, that it was not his choice of title. That was someone on the New York Times staff. That article, however, led to a book called The Math Myth and Other STEM Delusions. That's STEM as in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And, well, he talked about a lot of things, but let me try and boil down his main argument to one salient point. Okay, maybe it's two salient points. College and high school math requirements are overly and unnecessarily difficult, causing harm to students, and we should instead have courses that focus more on general numeracy. And as to my response, well, boy, where do I begin? First off, I should emphasize that when a, someone writes an article titled, Is Algebra Necessary?, and then writes a book titled, The Math Myth, needless to say, my opinion of them isn't very positive going in, and I should say it's probably not very positive after I left his talk either. I think my opinion of the man himself improved, my opinion of his ideas did not. I should emphasize that Hacker is clearly very enthusiastic about supporting students. He really is earnest about wanting to help them. And he's also not denigrating mathematics as an overall field. He feels that math is a good thing, he just disagrees with the policy for math education. Now his suggestions, where he actually offered suggestions, which wasn't very much, and I'll come back to that in a moment, were kind of a mixed bag. Some good things, some bad things, some eh kind of things. His reasoning for why he supported these things, well, I found it pretty unconvincing overall, even when he was arguing for something that I myself believed in. For starters, well, let me go back to my notes for this. For starters, he was frequently self-contradictory. He'd often say one thing and then contradict himself a few minutes later. At one point, he put a problem up on the board to demonstrate some of his ideas. And he was pointing to it and saying, look, this didn't require algebra, this was fourth grade math. Not ten minutes later, he pointed to the exact same problem on the board and said, look, here, this is why algebra is necessary. Yeah. And second off, he relies a lot on what I might call sensationalism, emotional scare tactics. He uses big words that sound frightening, but really it's just because people don't know what they are, not because they're actually things to be afraid of. I should emphasize he does this more in his article and in what I've read of his book than he actually did in the talk he gave. Third, and this is where things go really off the rails, he doesn't actually appear to understand math that well. This point has already been made by several reviewers of his book, including mathematicians Keith Devlin and Evelyn Lamb. You can read their reviews in the links below. His critiques often relied on him not knowing what something was, so he wasn't actually critiquing the thing, he was critiquing what he imagined the thing was. Fourth, he often used very simplistic explanations for very complicated systems. Now, of course, we do this all over the place because we just don't have time to understand everything in all of its details, but he seemed to be particularly egregious about it. After the talk, one of the professors got up and called one of his examples intellectually insulting. However, my biggest issue with his entire talk came down to three little words that he kept using to describe what he did. He constantly described himself as just asking questions. I've heard this phrase used a lot, and it's almost never used in a good way. It's the common fallback of cranks and conspiracy theorists of all kinds. Take, for instance, global warming deniers 
Nazis or anti-vaxxers, racists or misogynists or 9-11 truthers. You always hear this phrase, just asking questions come up. I'm just asking questions about the safety of vaccines, right? It's a common tactic for raising doubts about something without taking any responsibility for the resolution of those doubts. Because if all you are doing is just asking questions, then what you aren't doing is listening to answers. A while back, I found a website that contained something around 150 different common responses to critiques of global warming. And, you know, people were still just asking questions about them. The exact same questions that were addressed by that list. The answers were out there. They just weren't interested in finding them. Now, I wouldn't toss Hacker into the crank or conspiracy theorist categories. Well, not for the most part, but that's another topic. Still, I got a bad taste in my mouth whenever he said he was just asking questions. Because, like all the other people who were just asking questions, didn't sound like he was paying any attention to the answers. At The Ohio State University, Hacker was introduced by a non-mathematician who heralded him as introducing tough, new questions about math education policy. And this, to me, was absolutely galling. There wasn't a single topic, not one, that Andrew Hacker discussed in his talk that I hadn't already seen be talked about endlessly by the mathematical or educational communities, often with better reasoning, better examples, and less sensationalism. I'd like to talk more about what Professor Hacker had to say, including, by the way, the things he got absolutely right. But there's not enough room to do that in just one video, so I'm going to cut it off here. Besides, I'm out of tea again. Toodles!